Welcome to Electra Online. We're now starting a news video series on the planet Mars. And of course, Mars is a very interesting planet for a number of reasons that we'll go into into more detail. Mars always was that little red dot in the sky, sometimes very bright, as the distance between Earth and Mars, of course, changes depending upon where in the orbit Earth and Mars are. The redness of the planet is caused by the rust that's mixed in with the dust on the surface of the planet. And so it gives us that reddish color. It's very unique and we can easily see it in the sky, especially in Mars that is brightest, where Mars is the second brightest object in the sky after Venus. So what is so special about Mars? Well, people have been interested in the planet for hundreds of years and it turns out that Galileo was the first person to look at Mars through a telescope. His telescope wasn't powerful enough and didn't give enough resolution for him to see any sort of detail. So I just saw a bigger red dot. But it wasn't long after that when Christian Huggins was able to build a telescope that magnified things 50 times. And with that telescope, he was actually the first person to draw a map of Mars because he began to see variation in the coloration of the surface of Mars. He may have even seen a glimpse of one of the poles of Mars. So at least he was able to see some differentiation of color. And as people began to build bigger and better telescopes, we began to zero in on that mysterious planet to try and understand it a little bit better. Then came along Giovanni Schiaparelli. He was a director of the Milan Observatory, and he was able to use a telescope with a diameter of 22 centimeters, which is 8.7 inches. Of course, in today's standards, that isn't much, but then that was quite a telescope. And he was able to see even more detail than Christian Huggins. And he began to realize that some of the features on the planet kind of looked like big gullies, and he named them canali. Of course, that is in Italian, and it doesn't really mean canals like the canals of Venice. It simply means that they're kind of structures or gullies. But then it wasn't long after that when Parzival Lowell took that, and a bit of his imagination. Now, of course, Parcel Lowell founded the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. Of course, back then it was a perfect place to do ob observ observations because it's a very remote location, very high in altitude, and very far away from lights. And he used a 12-inch and 18-inch telescope. It was much better than what Giovanni had available to him and some of his imagination, and it turned those canali into actual canals. Now, in that case, he implied that those canals were potentially built by people living on Mars, Martians, that needed the water from the polar regions where there were ice caps, and he thought that perhaps it was using the ice melt from the polar caps to channel that water back into the regions where people are actually living. Presumably, since Mars is farther away from the sun, it's pretty cold on Mars, so people were probably living near the equator where it would be warmer, but they needed the water from the polar regions. So he began to imagine that there may actually be human, not human beings, but Martians with intelligence to build canals and with the capability to build canals to bring the water to where they were living. He wrote a few books, and the books associated Mars with potential life on Mars, so it would be interesting to read some of those books. But again, of course, we now know that that was just pure imagination, and it wasn't real. But that didn't keep people from continuing to build stories and ideas about potential life on Mars. It wasn't that long uh, after that that A.G. Wells came up with a story called the War of the Worlds where Martians came down to Earth to try and colonize Earth and try to defeat Earthlings because their planet was running out of resources and water and, and it was no longer habitable. So they wanted to come to the Earth and there was a big war. They're trying to defeat us. Then Ray Bradbury came with an interesting story called the Martian Chronicles. That was written in 1950. They made a movie about that very interesting movie. I just recently saw that movie. It's kind of interesting, but again, the idea that long ago Martians lived on the planet and that they were now near the end of their life. Or in this case, if perhaps that even real Martians didn't even live there anymore, that it was something from the past. And then, of course, the movie Total Recall, of course, not a potentially really great movie, but it didn't have an interesting concept. The concept that there was a very intelligent race that had come to Mars and they had thought that they could turn the planet back into a livable planet 
through terraforming. So there was this advanced technology on the planet that when it was engaged, it would provide a nice atmosphere around Mars and Mars would be livable again. So Mars, of course, plays in many of our imagination, perhaps thinking that one day people will actually go to Mars to begin to colonize Mars and perhaps even begin to terraform Mars. Matter of fact, the National Geographic magazine not that long ago actually put up a really big article with the concept of terraforming actually being possible and turning Mars back into a livable planet and that to build up the atmosphere, to build up the oxygen and get plant life to live there again. Of course, that may be a little bit far-fetched, especially now, but you never know. You never know that that planet might turn back into a livable planet. It turns out that very long ago, once upon a time, Mars probably was very similar to the Earth. Mars had oceans and rivers and rain and clouds and atmosphere, and so even the potential that life may have existed once upon a time. And one of the purposes of sending satellites and landers to the surface of Mars is to potentially find remnants, fossilized remnants of that life. Perhaps not life today, but evidence that life once upon a time existed on Mars. It wouldn't be that far-fetched to think that that would be possible. So, a lot of very interesting things about the planet. We'll delve into it, we'll go one step at a time, really get into the, the details about this very special planet really not that far away from us. So stay tuned and we'll have some interesting videos for you. No, it's actually totally called the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many people that talk about totally not the movie? <laughs> well, I won't comment too much about the acting in Total Recall, but it had an interesting idea. I was, I was intrigued by the very interesting idea in the movie. It turns out, to let you know, that one day on one of my birthdays, my wife agreed to sit next to me and watch that movie that she totally disliked. But because it was my birthday, she sat through it next to me and probably had a terrible time for two hours when I was having a great time watching that movie. <laughs> That's true. She did have a book. And she was reading the book while I was watching the movie. <laughs> but I thought it was very intriguing. The concept of the movie was very interesting. No, it wasn't. <laughs> the buggy eye part was so stupid. <laughs>